वेलकम एवरी वन टू आर नेक्स्ट क्लास ऑफ द एलिमेंटल एनालिसिस एंड टूडे द टॉपिक इज कम्बस्टन एनालिसिस विच इज अ टाइप ऑफ क्वान्टिटेटिव एलिमेंटल एनालिसिस क्वान्टिटेटिव एलिमेंटल एनालिसिस में वी विल डिटर्मिन द परसेंटेजिस ऑफ एलिमेंट present in an organic compound in quantitative analysis we determine the percentages of the elements which are present in a compound now the compound may be organic or inorganic but today in our discussion the focus will be on the organic compound combustion analysis what does combustion mean you know combustion means the burning of an organic compound in the excess supply of oxygen or air <clears throat> whenever any organic compound is combusted we get two major products one of them is carbon dioxide and the second one are the water vapors combustion analysis is quantitative analysis in which we will determine the percentages of the elements and this combustion analysis is only used for the analysis of organic compounds but even there is a limitation that combustion analysis is not usually used for every organic compound but it is used for only those organic compounds having carbon hydrogen and oxygen combustion analysis is applied to those organic compounds that have carbon hydrogen and oxygen only sometimes the nitrogen can also be detected but that becomes very complex so we will exclude it from our topic we will limit to that organic compound that has carbon hydrogen and oxygen so you can say it is a type of cho analysis <coughs> what is the apparatus which is used in the combustion analysis you can see that these there are the four tubes first second third and the fourth one the first tube is called as the combustion tube in which the weighed sample of organic compound this organic compound is the one in which we want to calculate the percentage of carbon hydrogen and oxygen so weighed sample is taken it means the first thing that we will get it will be the mass of organic compound when sample is given to us first of all we weigh the sample and after weighing the sample we note down the mass of the organic compound <clears throat> this weighed sample of the organic compound is placed in a combustion tube and air is also supplied for the combustion of the organic compound this combustion tube is further fitted in a furnace now there is a second tube in which magnesium perchlorate is used because it is a hygroscopic solid so it will absorb the water vapors which and the water vapors are the product of the combustion of the organic compound so the first product of the combustion will be captured here and the second product of the combustion is carbon dioxide for absorption of the carbon dioxide this carbon dioxide absorption tube is used in which 50% qh is used which is co2 absorber 
मेन केवेज विल एब्सॉर्ब कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड विच इज द सेकेंड मेजर प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द कम्बर्शन ऑफ द ऑर्गेनिक कंपाउंड एंड द लास्ट ट्यूब इज जस्ट फॉर द कलेक्शन ऑफ द वेस्ट गैसेस वट इज द प्रोसीजर वे द सैंपल पुट इट इन टू द कम्बर्सन ट्यूब एंड फिट द कम्बर्सन ट्यूब इन अ फर्नस द मैग्नेशियम पर कलोरेट इज प्लेस इन द सेकेंड ट्यूब एंड द होल ट्यूब इज वेट and similarly 50% qh is placed in this tube and the whole tube along with 50% qh that is weighed and the weight of these two tubes is noted down and the last one is for the collection of the waste gases now all these tubes are connected together the furnace is turned on and the when furnace is turned on the organic compound is combusted when it com it is combusted Water vapors are formed. These water vapors are captured by the magnesium perchlorate, and carbon dioxide is formed. This carbon dioxide is absorbed in the fifty percent QH. When the whole organic compound is combusted, we will disrupt the whole apparatus, and now we will focus on these two tubes. as i already mentioned that before the start of the combustion magnesium perchlorate was put in this tube and the whole tubes whole tube was weighed similarly 50% qh was put in this tube and the whole tube was weighed now after combustion when water and co2 are absorbed in their respective chambers then these tubes are weighed again now the difference of the weight before combustion and after combustion suppose that before combustion this tube whole tube along with magnesium perchlorate weighed 5 g suppose and after combustion it weighed 6 g now from where this 1 g has come this 1 g is actually the mass of h2o so the second thing that we will get is the mass of water similarly this tube is also weighed again and the weight after combustion weight of the tube after combustion minus weight of the tube before combustion that will give you the mass of carbon dioxide now the practical portion of the combustion analysis is over we will apply some formula and then we will calculate the percentages of the carbon hydrogen and oxygen but before writing down the formula i will like to mention one thing that the absorption of water vapors into this sample this one is an example of physical absorption because magnesium perchlorate has captured the water molecules and now the water molecules are attached to magnesium perchlorate in the form of water of crystallization there will be no chemical change in this solid so this type of absorption is the physical absorption but when carbon dioxide is absorbed in 50% qh this absorption is the chemical absorption why it is chemical absorption because co2 is an acidic oxide and qh is a base so this acidic oxide and base they will react together and a chemical change will take place so this absorption is the chemical absorption while the water molecules are just attached to magnesium perchlorate in the form of water of crystallization no chemical change so this absorption is the physical absorption now we have three weights mass of organic compound that was calculated when the sample was given to us mass of h2o which was calculated by having the difference of weight of this tube after and before combustion and mass of co2 which was calculated from the weight of this tube after minus before 
after having these three masses now we will apply some formula and what are those formulas the first one is percentage of carbon the formula of the percentage of carbon is mass of co2 this one divided by mass of organic compound this one multiplied by 12 over 44 into 100 why we have used this 12 over 44 because the carbon of the organic compound is changed to co2 after combustion so 12 is the mass of one mole of carbon and 44 is the mass of one mole of co2 instead of writing 12 over 44 we can also write the mass of one mole of carbon divided by mass of one mole of co2 this 12 over 44 just indicates that the carbon now is in the form of co2 and we are calculating the percentage of carbon of organic compound through co2 the second formula which is applied is for the percentage of hydrogen now the percentage of hydrogen is equal to mass of water this one divided by mass of organic compound multiplied by 2.016 over 18 into 100 this 2.016 is the molar mass of h2 and 18 is the molar mass of water and we have used this because now the hydrogen of the organic compound after oxidation or after combustion combustion is an a type of oxidation after oxidation or after combustion the hydrogen is changed to water and now we are calculating the percentage of hydrogen through water so mass of hydrogen divided by mass of water the mass of species of the organic compound divided by the mass of the species which is formed after combustion in 200 <clears throat> this was the formula to calculate the percentage of hydrogen but now a third element is also present there that is the oxygen how the percentage of oxygen is calculated the formula is percentage of oxygen is equal to 100 minus percentage of carbon plus percentage of hydrogen this method of or this formula of calculating the percentage of oxygen is called as method of difference or the difference method the percentage of carbon plus percentage of hydrogen is summed up and 100 minus the percentage of carbon plus percentage of hydrogen that will tell us the percentage of oxygen suppose we have 100 rupees and we are to divide it between three persons the first person gets 30 rupees the second person gets 40 rupees now how much the third person will get that will be 100 minus 30 plus 40 so 100 minus 70 and it will be obvious that the third person will get 30 out of that 100 rupees and the same formula is applied here for carbon we apply this formula for hydrogen we apply a again formula but in case of oxygen we apply the method of difference why because oxygen is present in organic compound as well as in air and now the oxygen of air and organic compound they are mixed and you cannot differentiate between them so we have to apply the method of difference 
And now we get the percentage of all these three elements that is percentage of carbon, percentage of hydrogen and the third element which is percentage of oxygen. So combustion analysis is basically to find these percentages because it is quantitative analysis which is used to find the percentages. The combustion analysis is over. When we find the percentage of each element in a compound that is called as its percentage composition. So basically combustion analysis is used to find the percentage composition of the organic compound. And after finding the percentage composition, now a very important point, this percentage composition will be used to find the empirical formula of organic compound. So directly we can say that we find the percentage composition and indirectly we can say that that percentage composition will be used to find the empirical formula of that organic compound. But we will not be able to find the molecular formula of the organic compound because in order to find the molecular formula we also require the molecular mass which is determined by some other method. So unless and until we don't determine the molecular mass or molar mass of that organic compound we will not be able to find the molecular formula. Therefore, combustion analysis is restricted to the determination of the empirical formula. Now, combustion analysis is a very classical technique. Even nowadays, combustion analysis is not used because it has certain demerits. And what are those demerits? The first one, it is limited to organic compounds only. And even the thing to worry is that it is not applicable to all organic compounds. It is only applicable to those organic compounds that have carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. If any fourth element is present then combustion analysis is failed. So that was the first limitation. The second limitation is it is very time consuming and nowadays there are so many modern methods that require much much lesser time to find the percentage composition of a compound. The third disadvantage or the third demerit is <clears throat> that a large amount of the sample is required. And today now in the modern techniques even the micro quantities of the substances can be analyzed. So combustion analysis requires relatively greater amount of the organic compound to be analyzed. <clears throat> These are some demerits of the combustion analysis and the combustion analysis nowadays is replaced by some modern techniques like the spectroscopies etc. I hope so that the idea of the combustion analysis is quite clear to you people and that was the quantitative elemental analysis. Next time we will come up how empirical formula is calculated from the percentage compositions which were determined by the combustion analysis. Till then, Allah.